Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Before I begin on the stories, I just wanted to mention, if you have your own personal scary story that you would like to send me for me to possibly narrate here on the channel, you can do so by sending it to southerncannibal.com. So if you have a personal true scary story that you'd like to share, please consider sending it my way. Now that all that's out of the way, let's begin. A bit of background first. I live with my mom and brother in England. My mom is hardworking and works at a Haribo factory. Yeah, it sounds weird, but it's true. I'm going to refer to my brother as F. F is about 20 and he's unemployed, mostly going out to have sleepovers and hanging out. Anyway, it all started at about 9.30. My brother was at the pub and my mom was out with her friends. They put me in charge of the house, and I was alone. I sat in my bed watching YouTube on the TV, and also texting my friends at the same time. About midway through the video, the power went out. I had never had a power outage alone before, and I didn't know what to do. I turned on my phone flashlight, and continued to occupy myself while talking to my friends. I had mobile data on my phone, for anyone wondering. While I was on a video call with my friend Lola, I had heard clattering coming from the kitchen. However, I didn't investigate, as I knew for a fact that nobody was actually in my house. I mean, right? My friend said it was probably nothing, and comforted me. Still though, I wanted to get up and check to see if the door was locked. And holy shit, it wasn't. It was shut, but it was unlocked. I was terrified, and I immediately locked the door. I ran back up to my bedroom upstairs, shut my door, and then took a few breaths afterwards. I laid back down, continuously chatting to my friends as they comforted me. I decided to try and get some sleep. I was later awoken when the lights flashed on. My door was wide open now. I walked downstairs, hearing the door handle turn over and over. I then looked into the kitchen, and I saw a man in a hood struggling to get the door open. I let out the most blood-curdling scream and then ran upstairs. I then grabbed my phone and hid. I had checked the time, and it was about 12 a.m. at this point. I was in the bathroom downstairs with the door locked. Thankfully, when I went to grab my phone, he didn't try and look for me but just kept checking other places. While I was in the bathroom, I called for my friend to help, and I then called the police right after. There was a loud banging coming from the bathroom door, and it seemed like I was done for at this point. I was crying, hoping he would show mercy, and after about 10 minutes, it stopped. I couldn't bring myself to check, so I just stayed inside and waited. Like a miracle, the police arrived and they barged in. I then came out. They went on to report that nobody was in the house and there was no way they could have escaped from any of the exits. Well, within the next few days, food kept going missing and my mom and brother forgot all about the man. I got up on a Tuesday from my mom asking me to go shopping with her. I went to my closet, but... I had heard breathing. He was there. This man was in my closet, and he had been watching me sleep. But my mom had already left for the shop, carelessly leaving me home alone again. I ran downstairs, missing steps, full of adrenaline now. I heard the cupboard open, and footsteps right behind me. I shut the doors from behind me, and then escaped into the front of the house. I didn't know what else to do, so I ran all the way to the park, losing my breath. As I looked behind me, I saw that the man had followed me all the way to the park. There he was, holding one of my kitchen knives. He then stepped closer to me. I took a deep breath, and I ran all the way back home with all of my might. As soon as I got home, I ran inside and then shut the door. The man never came back 
and I don't really know what happened to him. But I didn't want to stay home alone for a really long time after that. And if I'm being honest, I still don't really like doing it. It was December 3rd, 2019. It was a cold and rainy day, and my mom and dad had went out for the night to go for a date. So they decided that I was old enough to stay home by myself. My parents gave me certain rules and emergency numbers to call, and then they left. I was 15 years old, so I immediately went to my room to go get my phone. After about an hour or so went by, I was on FaceTime with my boyfriend, and I heard a banging sound, and the doorbell constantly ringing. I said to my boyfriend that I'd be right back, and that I was going to go check it out. Well, as I'm walking to the door, the doorbell is still being rung. When I made it to the door, I looked through the peephole, but I didn't see anyone. I stood there a little longer, and then heard more banging at the door. If you don't stop doing that, I'm gonna call the police! I screamed out. Then, I heard a male voice then say, in a taunting voice, Open the door and I won't spill your guts. And as soon as I heard that, I then immediately ran back to my room and I told my boyfriend. He told me to hide under the bed and call the police, which I did. I then called 911, telling the operator all about the experience, and she said she would send the police. But right after she said that, I then heard glass break, but the police made it to the house right before the man could make it to me. The police brought out a 67-year-old man who was a registered sex offender who had apparently been watching my house for over a week and thought that no one was home. I'm now an 18-year-old female, and I still don't really like staying home alone. When I was about 11 years old, my family left me home alone. My sister was at a sleepover, my father was at work, and my mother was staying with her sister who had just gave birth in the hospital. I didn't have a phone at the time, so my father gave me his, and he told me to call his work number if anything happened. Of course, he didn't actually expect anything to happen. It was about midnight then, and way past my bedtime. I was putting my tablet up and getting ready to sleep. Well, when I was almost asleep, I then heard a knocking on my window. My bedroom was on the second floor, and I often read and watch horror stuff, so it was pretty natural to assume that it was just my imagination. I checked though, it wouldn't stop, and I was getting scared. I looked up, but there was nothing there. I could still hear the knocking though, so I stood up and looked out my window. As cliche as this might sound, I then saw a man wearing a black hoodie, as well as a mask, right outside of my window. He started tugging at my window as if trying to open it. I was freaked out, so I jumped back down in bed. I checked again soon after to see if he was still there. He once again started knocking on my window, which really terrified me. I closed my blinds just to make sure my windows were actually locked. I then ran to my parents' bedroom and called my dad. He didn't pick up the first few times, but he did finally answer on the third or fourth. I then told him what happened, and he called the police. I ended up falling asleep about 20 minutes later, when I didn't hear anything else. When I later woke up, my mother was beside me. Apparently a man had a gun, and had tried to break in and rob us. He had stacked large garbage bins outside of my window. I honestly believe if I didn't call my father, I would have been killed. My name is Grace, and I'm 20 years old. This happened when I was about 13 years old, and I was home alone. Even though this happened 7 years ago, it's still fresh in my mind, and I really can't ever forget about it. At this time, my sister was hanging out with friends and my parents were out on a date. 
It was about 9 p.m. and I was watching some YouTube on my computer. My dog was sleeping on the couch when she suddenly lifted her head up and then looked out the window. Now, this didn't concern me too much because she always did this at the slightest noise. And I didn't look up at first. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. Then, as if in a cliche horror movie, I heard the loudest bang at the front door. I jumped off of the couch and then froze for a few seconds. I know I shouldn't have done this, but as if I was the typical victim in a horror movie, I walked to the front of the door and opened it. I looked out from the front porch and I didn't see anyone at first. Then, just as I was about to close the door, I then saw something in our bushes. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was a head of someone. I then screamed at the top of my lungs, then slammed the door shut, locked it, and then immediately called my dad. He didn't sound too concerned about what I told him, but I knew what I heard and saw. I will never forget that horrific sight of the person, just crouching there in the bushes, spying on me in the house. I ended up sleeping with my parents that night, because I was so worried that the person would come back and then break in the house. This might not be the world's scariest story, but just put yourself in the shoes of a 13-year-old that was home alone and really imagine that horrifying scene. I can laugh about it now, but I can still remember just how terrified I was. My mom is really good friends with one of the wealthiest people in our town. They have a daughter who's my age. I don't have a crush on her or anything, but my mom has always pushed me to ask her out before, but I never did. Here's the weird thing about that situation though. My mom and this friend, along with her daughter, all kind of just act like they're friends, like a bunch of high school girls getting together to gossip. My mom works in a beauty salon, so I guess I understand why she likes to act that way but it's still pretty weird nonetheless. There was one specific occasion when this woman and her daughter were going to visit New York City. They decided to invite my mom for some reason. I don't understand why. I guess they really were better friends than I had previously believed. But my mom decided to say yes. So it was now just me and my dad at the house. But here was the thing. They didn't have a dad at home. Their house was going to be completely unsupervised for the entire weekend. I was in my early 20s at the time, so I guess they thought it would be a good idea to ask if I would watch the house for them, which I agreed to do. I didn't get paid or anything, but they said that I was allowed to eat as much food as I wanted, and considering they were rich as hell, I thought, why not? This also gave me an opportunity to write some good short stories. I always loved writing, and I published some of my stuff online sometimes. I think it was that Friday night when I was watching their house. They told me that they had two cats, but that they were really scared of strangers, and I was probably not going to see either one of them the entire night. That didn't bother me, I just had to make sure they had food and water, which I did. I was chilling at the kitchen table, pounding the keys on my laptop on my latest story, when all of a sudden, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I looked up from my computer to notice the ugliest cat that I'd ever seen in my life. Now, just imagine a hairless cat, but also morbidly obese and cross-eyed. It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Any one of those traits individually would have made a cute cat, well, kind of. But seeing them all thrown in one pitiful excuse for a pet almost made me want to bust a gut laughing. I felt kind of bad laughing so hard at this girl's cat, but it's not like I heard it or anything. That had been a good break from writing, and then I got back into it. I remember being in the middle of writing a really interesting scene. This ghost was abducting the protagonist of the story. It's kind of a psychological thriller with a little bit of paranormal thrown in there. It's very spiritual and weird. But I'm kind of a weird person, 
But that scene still sticks with me because as I was writing it, I had noticed something outside. There was a man in a hooded sweatshirt walking around. I sat at the kitchen table, stunned. I didn't know what to do. I felt this adrenaline burst through my veins. Fight or flight. Well, I figured that my car was outside, so running wasn't really going to do me much good. And after about a minute of rationalizing the situation, I really had no proof that this person was out to do anything bad. I mean, for all I knew, this could have been a jogger. I got up close to one of the windows to then watch this man. He seemed to be sneaking around. He wasn't coming towards the house I was in, so I figured that I was at least safe for the moment. But then, I noticed him looking into the window of the house across the street. I can only assume that he was checking the houses to see if people were home or not. Must have really been one of those types of burglars. Just show up in the wealthy neighborhood and see who isn't home. I don't know why he would do it at night though, looking as suspicious as he did. We live in a gun state after all. A few minutes went by and even I could tell that there were people at the home he was checking out. By the time he realized it, I noticed him do a full 180 and he was walking in my direction now. I was about to be face to face with this man. I saw him walking across the street and I immediately started to panic. I called the police as fast as I could and told them the situation, but they said it would be about 20 minutes before anyone could be here. I ran up to the attic to hide, locking the door behind me. In retrospect, this was my biggest mistake. I should have really turned on a bunch of the lights and try and make it obvious that someone was here. I'm normally good at thinking, just not in the moment. The house must have looked uninhabited by the time I'd gotten up to the attic. This honestly made the house the perfect place to burglarize and steal everything. I was in the attic for about 10 minutes when I heard a window breaking from downstairs. He was inside the house. My heart was beating inside my forehead. He walked around the house for a few minutes. I heard the humongous boots marching across the wooden floors. He explored the house for a good while. I was really beginning to wonder where the police were. Typical of them. I then heard him get close to the attic entrance. And that was the moment that really pushed me over the edge. I started screaming at the top of my lungs that I had a gun. I told him I was going to shoot his head off if he didn't leave the house immediately. To my absolute shock, he ran away. I watched him run down the street as I looked on through the window. It appeared that this guy was even more scared for his life than I was. The police eventually got there and I told them the entire story from beginning to end. They said that a couple of different people had reported this guy in a nearby neighborhood, so this wasn't the first night he's been out doing this. The police also explained that this guy hadn't been violent on any of the occasions they've been called. They said it was about the seventh time this month that they've responded to a similar incident in a wealthy neighborhood. I guess he's going around looking for an easy way to make money. He hasn't been face to face with any of the homeowners yet, so maybe he isn't a violent criminal, but just a criminal. I found the entire experience really interesting, yet mortifying. Living through it was probably the most scared I've ever been. My mom, her friend, and their daughter didn't even come back early from their trip after it happened. I thought that was a lame move, but what do I know? For revenge, I ate every single pizza roll they had in the freezer. And if you're wondering, there were three bags of 90 pizza rolls. I ate 270 pizza rolls that weekend, and I have no regrets. I solely needed them right after that borderline traumatic experience with the burglar.